Connecting the SWAC, the MEAC, SIAC, and the CIAA. The HBCU experience lives here. It's the HBCU Report with Bob Calloway. This is the HBCU Report being heard via Spreaker.com. We are powered by SportsNewsBrews.com, your official source for sports, black news, political news, and the latest on your favorite craft beers. Rob Calloway here and is promised, I promised you guys last Saturday, that we would have a special edition of the HBCU Report where we spotlight uh, the 93rd annual Turkey Day Classic. And here we are, Wednesday night, the night before Thanksgiving. And, uh, man, we got a great show lined up for you and yours, Reginald Reffin. Head football coach of the Miles College Golden Bears, as well as Brian Jenkins, the head football coach of the Alabama State University Hornets, will join the show uh, coming up momentarily. Uh, but just to give you a little background on the uh, Magic City Classic, for me, uh, for those of you that listen to this show on a regular basis, you know that I attended Alabama State University. Um, this is my 20th anniversary, the 20th anniversary of my very first Turkey Day Classic. You know, I was in the band, and, and this is uh, where we actually, what they call, crossed the band, where we officially got our band letter, where we uh, were officially acknowledged as a member of the Mighty Marching Hornets of Alabama State University. And so, uh, you know, t- tomorrow is a very uh, uh, symbolic day, you know, for not just me, but for those that, that crossed that band as well, for those that, uh, because it's homecoming. If I didn't mention that, it's, it's Bama State's homecoming. So uh, it, it's a, a, a real deal for those that come back, you know, for Thanksgiving, because it's a major sacrifice to actually leave your family to come to uh, to go to Montgomery, Alabama for uh, homecoming. And so it's a real special occasion for, uh, you know, everybody that, that ever attended Alabama State. Now, I know some folks that once they left, they never went back. Like for me, you know, I haven't been to a Turkey Day Classic uh, in the 2000s. I'll just go ahead and be real. It's been 16 years since I went to a Turkey Day Classic. Uh, but, you know, it is the oldest classic. Uh, in the uh, nation, if you will, in the HBCU ranks, it is the oldest. Again, 1924 uh, was the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was 1924. Yeah, uh, November 15th, 1924 was the uh, very first um, Turkey Day Classic. Now, you know, the thing about the Turkey Day Classic is that uh, it's one of two games that that are played on Thanksgiving weekend, the Turkey Day Classic uh, traditionally played on Thanksgiving Day. And then you have the Bayou Classic, which is played the Saturday after Thanksgiving. And so uh, two big games coming up this weekend. And so uh, coming up Saturday at the normal time, 8 Eastern uh, via Spreaker.com, we will uh, preview the Bayou Classic, the 74th annual uh, Bayou Classic, or uh, the 74th, excuse me, the 42nd annual Bayou Classic, uh, which happened Saturday, uh, 5 o'clock Eastern kickoff from the Mercedes-Benz Superdome on NBC Sports Network between Grambling and Southern. Both of these teams come into uh, Saturday's Bayou Classic undefeated in the SWAC, uh, similar to what we saw last week uh, in that big-time MEAC showdown between North Carolina Central and North Carolina a t which I have to say, shouts out to my boy, Jerry Mack, on uh, winning his third consecutive MEAC uh, championship, this one being his first outright championship. It was the first uh, outright MEAC championship since uh, 2012. Uh, but the team that lost Saturday's game, North Carolina a t shouts out to Coach Rod Broadway. Uh, they are headed to uh, the Division One playoffs, and so they kicked the playoffs uh, off Saturday versus Richmond. So big shouts out to both of those institutions. Uh, also, shouts out to Tuskegee. Uh, they advanced to the second round of uh, the NCAA Division II playoffs. Uh, Winston-Salem State, they uh, they fell to LIU Saturday, but definitely got to uh, say job well done to uh, Coach Cannon's uh, Bullware and the guys up at Winston-Salem State. A uh, lot of stuff going on, man. This is the HBCU Report. Uh, Rob Calloway here. We're being heard via Spreaker.com. A lot of stuff going on. Uh, last weekend, we had um, – Joe Thomas Sr., the 55-year-old running back. That's right. If you haven't heard, South Carolina State um, had a 55-year-old running back on the roster, and he actually got in the game. It was senior night, senior day uh, against Savannah State last Saturday, and on his first carry, he trucked the dude on his way to picking up three yards, and I think he ended up with three carries for negative one yard. But, hey, he was 55 years old and got in a football game. So we definitely have to salute Joe Thomas, and uh, I think we're going to have him on the show coming up next week. Uh, I got the folks over at uh, South Carolina State working on that, but of course, school is out for uh, Thanksgiving break, and so uh, we're going to see what we can do to get uh, Mr. Thomas, Mr. Joe, as they call him, 
uh, get him on the HBCU report. Uh, but just going back to this game uh, that we are previewing on uh, tonight's podcast, the uh, 93rd annual Turkey Day Classic. Um, a lot of folks, you know, know this game because traditionally it's been uh, Tuskegee and Alabama State. But there are six other teams, if I'm not mistaken, that have participated in the Turkey Day Classic outside of uh, Tuskegee. Uh, you have, and I'm just doing this off the top, you have uh, Johnson C. Smith, Clark Atlanta, Steelman, Miles, Livingstone, and Fayetteville State. Maybe I'll say one of those twice because I forgot Mississippi Valley. They actually participated in one Turkey Day Classic. So there have been times um, traditionally where Tuskegee was not involved in the Turkey Day Classic like now, you know, because uh, it's a conflict between the NCAA uh, Division II playoffs and the Turkey Day Classic or just the, the NCAA playoffs in general and the Turkey Day Classic because it's played on a Thursday and then you have that playoff game on Saturday, so it's no way that it can happen. And so, you know, Tuskegee, uh, did what they thought was best for their football program. And it, and it actually turned out to be better because they get a lot of great recruits over there at Tuskegee, uh, because of the, the playoffs and the great things that they're doing over there, uh, athletically and, and the support that they have for the football program from the administration over at Tuskegee. And so, uh, you know, they decided to opt out of, uh, the, the Turkey Day Classic. Uh, and it's been, uh, several years now since they have not been a part of the Turkey Day Classic, but but coming up um, next year, uh, 2017, they'll be back on the schedule, uh, but it won't be at the end of the season. It'll be in September, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know the exact date, uh, but yeah, this is the this is the fourth year that Tuskegee has not been a part of it. Uh, last year it was Miles College, and the previous two years it was Steelman College. But of course, Steelman has uh, since uh, canceled their football program, and so uh, you know tomorrow's game is going to be a, a great matchup. Uh, between Miles College, who represent the SIAC very well. Uh, this year has been, uh, you know, not Miles College-esque, if you will. Uh, the team only 5-4 uh, and four on the season. Uh, but, you know, when you talk about Bama State, it hasn't really been a Bama, great Bama State season either, just 7-3. and three. Even though we've seen a lot of flashes uh, of greatness, of brilliance out of Bama State, uh, I think they've lost, I think they ended up losing like three or four games by a total of four points. Yeah, one point each. Yeah, something like that. A safety, and and then they lost the other ones by one point. Then they had a couple that they lost maybe by six or seven. So they've been right there on the cusp. But I expect a, a really uh, highly uh, competitive football game when these two teams hook up tomorrow, 4 o'clock Eastern on ESPN3, uh, the 93rd annual Turkey Day Classic, which, by the way, is sponsored uh, by Steve Harvey. <clears throat> and so when we talk with um, Coach Brian Jenkins, uh, we're just going to try to, you know, feel the pulse of what's going on down in Montgomery and uh, how Steve Harvey's actually playing an intricate role, an integral role uh, in, in the Turkey Day Classic and the celebration and the, the parties and festivities that surround uh, Alabama State University homecoming. Kind of crazy, you know, when you think about it, having a homecoming on Thanksgiving. You know, when I first got to Alabama State, I didn't know anything about the culture at Alabama State University. I knew about the Magic City Classic. I knew about Alabama A&M, and that was pretty much it. I had never seen the band live, and I didn't know. I didn't know until halfway through the season when they said, yeah, homecoming. And I was like, well, when is homecoming? And they were like, Thanksgiving, the Turkey Day Classic. And I was like, well, I'm not going to be here for that. I'm going home. But guess what? I always find myself right there at the Turkey Day Classic. Yeah. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Don't forget, follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at HBCU Report. Um, we are powered by SportsNewsAndBrews.com, your official source for sports, black news, political news, and the latest on your favorite craft beers. And that whole craft beers thing, yeah, we got to get back to work on that, man. You know, there's been a lot of things going on, football season winding down. So I really don't have an excuse at this point. Now that football season uh, is coming to an end in the, the next few weeks, uh, HBCU football anyway. Uh, we'll definitely get back on the uh, craft beer tip for all of you that, that go to the website looking uh, for, you know, craft beer information. Because I know some of you all do, but you can always go to Instagram, uh, Sports News Brews, uh, Instagram. And we always, um, you know, post the beer of the week and all that good stuff for those of you that are into that. OK. All right. So coming up on the other side, uh, we will uh, officially kick off the preview 
uh, the, uh, the coaches preview with our original ref and head football coach of the Miles College Golden Bears. When we return, this is the HBCU Report. We are being heard via Spreaker.com. In addition to Spreaker, you can also hear the show via iTunes, Google Play Music for Android, and the TuneIn Radio app. The HBCU experience lives here. The HBCU Report with Rob Calloway. We'll be right back. Dave, what are you doing? Just sending a gift to Dave2037. Who? Me in the future. I save a little money from every paycheck as a gift to Dave2037. So he can spend it on things like anti-gravity boots or a hologram Doberman. Something cool like that. I think Dave2037 deserves it. He worked hard. What are you getting Steve2037? I guess I was thinking Steve2037 would just fend for himself. Well, all right. But don't expect to be borrowing my anti-gravity boots. You want to have money in your future? You got to start saving now. Putting some money from every paycheck into a savings account or contributing to your 401k can make a big difference later. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free ideas and easy ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. Hey, let's just hope Steve2037 doesn't get his hands on a cold time machine because he is going to come back here and knock some sense into you. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. Follow the HBCU Report on Twitter. Become a fan on Facebook. At HBCU Report, this is the HBCU Report with Rob Calloway. This is the HBCU Report being heard via Spreaker.com. We are powered by SportsNewsAndBrews.com, your official source for sports, black news, political news, and the latest on your favorite craft beers. Don't forget, in addition to Spreaker, the HBCU Report can also be heard via iTunes, Google Play Music for Android, and the TuneIn Radio app. And, of course, it goes down uh, this Thursday. It is uh, the 93rd Annual Turkey Day Classic. It is the homecoming for my ASU, Alabama State, and uh, they play host to Miles College. And right now we're being joined on the line uh, by Reginald Ruffin. He is the head football coach of the Miles College Golden Bears. First of all, Coach Ruffin, welcome home because this this is home. So welcome back. <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate it, you know, knowing you trying to beat up on me for your homecoming. So I appreciate it. No, nah, man, I'm not going to beat up on you. First of all, Coach, I don't think there there's a, another coach Coach, that's made more appearances on this show than you because here's the thing anytime I call you you always like yeah let's do it like I don't have to go through like the sports information director or anybody like that so you know we've talked you know quite a bit so hey I'm definitely not gonna beat up on you man I'm just I'm just hoping that that, that the Golden Bears don't go out there and beat up on my Hornets you know before we talk about this Bama State thing you know, it's, it's been a, uh, it was a crazy season in the SIAC. Uh, you know, the, the, the usual suspects, you know, I'm talking about, uh, Miles College, Albany State, um, um, who, who am I missing? Uh, even Tuskegee, even though they're in the playoffs right now, but you know, they, they lost a few. Uh, what do you, what are your thoughts on, on the 2016 season of the SIAC? Well, I can't speak for a lot of the other, uh, conference uh, members. Uh, for us, you know, we've been through a lot, you know, um, you know, for me uh, and my family, I know a lot of people um, have uh, said and continue praying for my wife. You know, my wife is battling cancer. Um, and they uh, didn't give her long to live. So uh, we've been we've been battling that all all season. And, uh, and uh, you know, I've been away from the team. So a lot of uh, our kind of our distraction has been. Uh, for the head coach, been away from the team, and uh, you know, but our guys rallied. They kept fighting. They didn't quit and give up. You know, you look at the Albany State game for us, uh, losing by uh, two points and uh, fumbling the ball uh, during that game to actually have a chance to win it and turn around and have the lead against Kentucky State, and we fumbled in the end zone. You know, and uh, and they recovered, scored, and won the game by four, and had Tuskegee. Uh, you know, uh, also in for the last what thirty five seconds, they drove down and scored and beat us by uh, three. Um, so it's just been a, a roller coaster of season for Miles College, uh, for what all we've been through. Uh, but like I say, the kids has been they've been battling the coaches. Uh, everybody's been in, you know, in the fight with me uh, for my family, but they've been in the fight also uh, about getting the job done uh, in my absence. And uh, you know, and and just looking at the SIC, uh, you know. You know, the guys come to play. You know, you got to come to play every week. You know, uh, you can see the, uh, you know, the fire in uh, Fort Valley. We played them the first game of the year, and they jumped out real quick on us. 
Uh, they had a lot of fire in uh, uh, you know, Kentucky State, you know, new coaching staff, new head coach. Uh, they were a different t- Kentucky State than they uh, usually Absolutely. have in the past. And, uh, you know, and that's a testament to uh, the development uh, of that coach coming in, developing those players. 